Welcome to For Media, where we provide a voice and social connection with furries from around the world. My name is Space, and I am returned back with my lovely hostess, Punya. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was so loud. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we welcome you guys back to the show. Um, oh, it's been a while. It's been so long since you've been on the show. I know. There we go. <laughs> I know I've been missed. I know it's it was it's been disappointing. <clears throat> so just just to give you guys a little heads up, I had a huge emotional big breakdown like all through August. I had to move out from my house identity crisis, all kinds of crazy stuff. And now I'm dealing with a respiratory infection, but I made it back just to be with all of you. <laughs> and I think like in general, like August was just one of those months and you have August? to have one of those months once a year. It was like, no offense, any women out there. It was like the period of all periods that could happen to a woman, but it happened to everyone. Yeah, Aunt, Aunt Flo didn't know how to take a hint that month. Yeah. And, and, and was it just me, or did August just seem unnecessarily rough for everybody? Oh, it was. It, it was... seemed like everybody just had such a crappy time. <laughs> Last week was incredibly crappy for me. It ended on a good note, but, like, oh, it was the worst. The worst. The worst of the worst. But, hey, we got fall coming up. Yeah. Hoodies, yes. bonfires, sweater pumpkin weather. spice, sweater wetter, scarves, leaves. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it. All the leaves are golden brown and they're falling on the ground. And, oh, it's picturesque. And, you know. Let's just roll around in them and then have some hot chocolate. No. Yes. We'll have some hot apple cider with caramel in it. Ooh, caramel apple cider. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, both. A couple of changes real quick for you guys to our show and how we do things. We're no longer featuring artists as like we're going to their fur affinity page. You'll see the featured artists in the background slides, which what you're looking at right now. We don't have any for today, but we do have a Kickstarter project that we're going to be talking about, which is what really you, awesome. What you just see right now is Ad Moxon. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, real quick, though, we're going to go on to YouTube because <laughs> Ponya has a special video for us. In case you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, in case you haven't seen it. It's funny because it's, it's, it's a remake of another video. But it's, it's freaking hilarious. I gotta if go. any... Go ahead. If any of you uh, are familiar with Steam, you might have recognized this from a couple years ago. At least the music and the, uh, the parody. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was I thought it was quite classic. I'm like, you have to make this into a video. She's like, I don't know if I can. I'm like, do it. You don't have a choice. <laughs> so here we go. This is this is her video. Are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready? Are you ready for a miracle? It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just great. I love it. <laughs> it's just a feel good thirty feel good for thirty seconds video. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um We'll link, you know what we'll do is in the chat, or not in the chat, but when we upload this onto YouTube, I'll link the original video and then I'll link this video on top of it. Um, both are hilarious. <laughs> both are hilarious. So that way you can, you can see the difference between the two, but they're both, I watched the other one, I'm like, oh my God, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so um, our featured Kickstarter, we'll do these once in a while. Um, just and they usually come to me. They message me and they say, "Hey, uh, I have this Kickstarter project, and since you guys have a following, a pretty good one, better than what we have, can you help us out?" And I'm like, "Sure, why not?" Um, so this is called Admox, and this is a. I won't say what it sounds like. For me, it sounds like something else, but I don't want to diss their projects. So I won't. <laughs> sounds not. Like it sounds like medication. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a moxicillin. There we go. <laughs> um, so Admoxen, now they sent me on, uh, on Fur Affinity, uh, brief description, because if you look down, 
Um, it just goes on and on and on. But what's really nice is they, in the description, they highlight in yellow the more key important parts, which is really nice to see because some Kickstarter projects or some games don't tell you, uh, don't do this. And so you're forced to like read black text and it's really annoying. Um, so this is a game. This is a role-playing game. And basically, it's a role-playing game that uh, sets a new standard on how you play role plays. I want to say it's kind of like a mix between D&D um, and a couple other things. But from what I'm understanding, from what I'm reading, it's really cool. Um, so let me go into the journals here. I had a journal open, but I you know, had to reset the computer. You know, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. All right. So Admoxen is a role play site primarily focused on furries, which hopes to breach the gap between PBP. So P is in Paul, B is in Bunny, P is in Paul, um, role playing and tabletop RPGs. It's a massive project, which will allow you to build character stats, earn items and money, create homes, joint events, or sorry, join events and even participate in solitary events such as hunting, foraging, mining, fishing, etc. The game takes place in a massively detailed and interactive world full of unique lore, uh, creatures, scenarios, locations, and a whole bunch more. Members are given rewards for their participation by building their stats of their characters, unlocking new areas, discovering new items and animals, and even creating, aka settling their own town, city, or world. It's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot to do even when... Uh, you're not oh there's a lot to do even when you're on your own and we run frequent games and contests and grouped activities um, so and then this says also that there will be a large collection of stories books encyclopedias comics music that will that is created around the world of admox and with both real world and digital copies available this also means that the site um, as a site gets older uh, gets older people will start to see their characters in these things um, so if I and Poonia, Poonia and I are playing this game and we somehow blow up a city and we're known for blowing up cities in their encyclopedias or history books, we'll be known for blowing up cities, which is kind of cool. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, I'm really excited about this game. Um, so you so can, the, the more you play, the more you shape the history of this world. Right, right. So and that's unlike something you would you would see. Now, I'm going to link this into chat here. And don't worry, folks, I'll also put this link onto our YouTube channel so you guys can have access to it. I've also posted it on Facebook as well for you guys to see. Um, it's always good to support not just your community, but like the furry community. And they have to raise about $10,000 to get this project started. And that includes, I believe, it says at the bottom. Let me go to the bottom here. Um, 10,000 will bring everything together that covers the cost of hiring artists, writers, and coders to help tidy up the forum website and construct a large, believable world full of unique interactive content. Reaching this mark will help us launch the site by July of 2015 at the latest. So games like this, they take a long time, but this seems like something I would totally be interested in because I love World of Warcraft and I like roleplay games, but I can't really find a game that really goes between those, and this would be one of those games. Um... Do now, they have a do they have a list of the um, artists they were thinking about hiring? Um, I just want to know who's on the deck. <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, Punya, if you go into our FA, you can message them and talk to them about that because I'm pretty sure they'll message back. And they're I also think on. I our, just might want to do that. They're also on our Skype too. Sweet. Um, so there's that. So what you get. All right, so um, for donating a dollar, you get um, our undenying gratitude and honorable mentions on our supporters page for all our backers. You'll also be the first to know of any updates, have access to our supporters, only form and beta access to the website pre-launch. Keep in mind that more funding we receive, the bigger um, better all the rewards will be. So for a uh, dollar, you immediately get, like, beta access. Yeah, which is pretty cool because <laughs> there are some games out there, like, a dollar will just be like, you get recognition. With this one, you get that and then, then some. Um, the digital rewards is a small Kickstarter pack, which includes 15 random items, which may include clothing, armor, food drops, uh, food drops, and tools. Physical rewards is a support button, uh, choice out of 10 plus different types. Now, there's another one. There's pledge $10 or more. That's the one that I did, so I pledged that one. That's the backer. Um, you know, because I'm poor. I don't have very much money. But I thought, why not? 
Um, my digital award will be the small Kickstarter. Um, and then I'll also get tools, a higher resolution download of the AdMox and world map. So I'll actually get the map, um, which is pretty nice. And then, um, of course, I'll get the undenying gratitude and stuff. But, you know, as of course, like as all Kickstarters, the higher you go, the more you, rewards you get. Um, the $30 or more, you get 25 random items. You get two support buttons and a small banner print. Um, I want to know what that is. That would be kind of cool. $50 or more, you get one medium Kickstarter pack, a 25 random drop. And then, like, it just, it just, the list just keeps getting bigger and bigger of all the different things. So that's generally how things happen on Kickstarter. So um, if you can go on there, it'd be great. Support it. Send a dollar. If that's all you have, a dollar, just send a dollar. That means that they're getting the traffic they need. Um, they're also getting the support they can get. Um, let's help them get to their goal item. And this is something you're going to be seeing on For Media on our pages. Um, I really want to play this next year because I'm not a big fan of role-playing games, but this seems like a game that I could totally get into. And I want to be in a history book, so... <laughs> I want to be known for destroying something. <laughs> so, uh, check it out. This seems like a really cool place. Um, so that's that. I don't think we have anything else. Um, oh, man, this is what I get for creating backgrounds that are black. I can't see the outline, so I can't adjust the screen properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was supposed to give my guest a warning, but I'll just say, hey, 30 second warning. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. We're going to we're going to be 30 up, Scotty. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our our guest tonight is Panda's Panda. Now, Panda's Panda had appeared on our show before for uh, what do you call it? Christmas in July. Mm -hmm. And he's a nice, cuddly panda out there. Uh, we have some questions for him tonight. Stuff that, you know, with with uh, interviews, we like to ask the questions that you can't find answers to on the internet. Um, and luckily for pandas, <laughs> there's not really much information to find. Uh, I try searching like wiki fur and I'm like, there's nothing here. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to call him right now. He's a really cool guy. Pretty funny. He's got some stories. Hello. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the show. How is everyone this evening? It's good. We're good. We're good. Um, we kind of gave you an intro, and I'm sorry for the 30-second warning. I was supposed to give you a two-minute warning. <laughs> that is not a problem at all. Totally forgot about it. <laughs> That's okay. Pandas isn't spacing out. I space out. That's my job. I know. <laughs> I may be the Star Trek panda slash Doctor Who lion, but I was not spacing out. There you go. Okay. Um, real quick, how was IFC? Uh, IFC, for those of you who don't know, that's Indie Furcon, uh, was uh, really, really good. We had over 500 people. We raised uh, over $6,000 for charity. Um, uh, it was uh, went pretty smooth. I mean, every con has its little hiccups, but we, we have knocked them out really well. Um, Really, really good con this year. We're really looking forward to uh, IFC 15 at our new hotel. Now, tell everyone your involvement with IFC. Uh, I'm their head of uh, marketing. Uh, basically, if you see uh, tweets or Facebook posts or posts on the For Affinity page, it's more than likely me, 99 point whatever percent of the time. Um, uh, it could be our illustrious uh, Chairman Roxas posting, but uh, most of the time it's me. Uh, I also had the uh, honor of putting together the con book, which was a first for me this year. I also... Uh, uh, run around and basically help run panels and whatnot uh, throughout the convention and get thrown wherever they need me to. Um, but over the course of the year, it's essentially helping with the website, helping with the Twitter, helping with the Facebook, being the the social media side of the convention. Good heavens. It's like what I do for, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Chances are if you're, if you're tweeting us or if you're Facebooking us and we respond like lightning fast, that's usually me on the other end. <laughs> Always have oh. my phone on me. <laughs> uh, I just see someone has a quick question. IFC is in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it's usually in August every year. Uh, we are going to be the weekend of the 15th in 2015. We were Labor Day weekend this year, unfortunately, but uh, it's usually the middle of August every year. 
And just in case they're inquiring, there's a link to um, Indie Furcon, which we'll also put in our... <coughs> we just have a splash. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Punya over here is dying. <laughs> Punya, Punya's excuse. She has a lung yeah. infection. That's Sorry. okay. Sorry. I've been like... I'm trying to mute. I've been muting this like every two, three minutes, just trying to hack out of a lung. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Um, yep. Uh, 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 IndieFurcon.com right now, it's just our splash page because we just took uh, the website down. We're literally going to tear our old one apart and put a new, much more user-friendly one up. We didn't particularly care for the... Uh, user friendliness of the old one so we're just shredding the old one out completely and uh, putting a brand new one in its place uh, uh, behind the scenes and then once that's up and running we'll uh, be social media blasting that uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, FA letting everyone know when that goes up that's cool, that's kind of like what we're doing like if they go on to our, if you guys go on to our website right now for media.net you just see this crappy boring <laughs> sorry greg <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry web designers we have two web designers working on our website right now but it's it's so boring and right now what they're doing is they're working on a website offline and then they're about they're going to upload it when it's ready so similar to what you're doing mm -hmm. but it, it's not user friendly it just looks plain and boring and so i just told them make me blow me out of the water with this because that's what i need and i think it's important for fur cons to have user friendly websites because if i if I can't find the information that I need, I'm gone. I'll go somewhere else. And that was that was one of the, the feedback that we had over the course of the year. So we were like, yep, we're taking that into account. We're definitely going to tear it down and, and make it more user-friendly. Yeah. A little, a little hint for you guys, because this works no matter what you're doing online. Um, you have less than five seconds to grasp the attention of anyone. That includes for affinity. So if you have artwork, but you want to get noticed, you better have good artwork on there. Otherwise, they're going to be like, eh, whatever, and they're not going to come back. So that's that's a general rule for anything. That's why you know we're constantly like updating our graphics, and uh, websites are always trying to be the best and trying to outdo the other websites because they have five seconds to grasp your attention. Otherwise, they're gone. So good luck to you. Sick. It's actually six seconds. Okay, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds sounds better. <laughs> six seconds is the proven study of attention span for people. If they don't get what they want in six seconds, they lose interest immediately. And that does not count for rich, <laughs> snotty people. <laughs> yeah. I want it now. Um, <laughs> not, not the rule for everyone, but the majority, yes. <laughs> um, well, we have some questions for you. Yay. Mm -hmm. So we'll start off with the classic ones. Um, the classic ones being, uh, how did you find the fandom, and how long have you been involved involved in the fandom? Uh, I stumbled upon the fandom completely randomly. Uh, um, I was a fan of Doctor Who and Star Trek and, and science fiction in general. Uh, mm -hmm. I had moved back to my hometown uh, up in uh, uh, the border of northern Michigan and northern Ontario, Sault Ste. Marie, way up north. And uh, I was like, you know, I need to go somewhere fun this year. Was trying to find like a, a Comic Con or, or something to that effect uh, near where I lived. And uh, in my searching, uh, I was trying to find something. And and uh, somehow it, it gave me a link. Did you mean furry convention? And I was like, what the heck is a furry convention? <laughs> <laughs> so I started looking into it and it said, Furry Connection North, Michigan's first furry convention this upcoming April, because this was January of 2008, I was I was looking, and it was April 2008 it was the very first FCN, and uh, I was started looking into it, and was like, what the heck is this, and started going through what's a furry convention, and what what what's a fursuiter, and all of a sudden I was looking at this picture of this adorable fursuiter, and, 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 and uh, I didn't know what it was. I'm like, oh, it's a costumed character. This is very interesting. And I, it just it was adorable, and it had arms stretched wide, like it wanted to just, you know, like, hey, give me a big hug. And I just, I turned into like Liam Neeson from Taken. I was like, I don't know what you are. <laughs> I don't know where you are, but I will find you. <laughs> And I will hug you. <laughs> okay, we're back, back, back. Furry Connection North. Okay, I need to go to this convention. So I found the convention. I found the fandom through a furry convention uh, randomly. So I went to FCN 2008. Um, completely on a whim. I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this thing out. Laughed myself silly for three days straight. And I was like, I'm home. 
this is this is my second family. I, I I'm here. I'm here, and and from there found my persona, and and it just developed from there. And that's that's how I found all you wonderful people, all all us wonderful people. <laughs> the hidden family. The hidden family. The hidden family I didn't know I had. <laughs> No, uh, I. You have to uh, excuse me because we have these questions. There's a couple questions for me and a couple questions from Punya, but they're not in order. So I have to go figure out which ones are in order to ask you next. <laughs> um, That's okay. We might actually end up going back and forth on these. I was reading online that you have your suit that is made by two particular people. Uh, your suit's made by Savage Turtle. Is that right? Okay, my I have um, there is a, um one um that looks like a, a regular panda. I haven't seen a picture of it yet. Um, it just looks like a, a regular looking panda without the half and half markings. That was my very very first uh, suit. Uh, I actually got it at Anthrocon 2008. Uh, after going to FCN, I. Uh, was told you should go to AC if you're, you're you're new to the fandom. You need to go to AC, and I'm like, what the heck is AC? And they're like, oh, it's this is convention in Pittsburgh. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll go. And I went there, and they happened to have like a pre-made panda costume for sale, and um, uh, by Savage Savage Turtle, I believe, is, is who made it, and. Um, uh, they had uh, you know, hand and feet paws and head and everything, and uh, I, I was like, okay, um, let me try it on, and it fit, and I was like, okay, this is this is cool. I'm I'm going to to get this. I'm now a first suitor. All right, and I suited literally from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. on the Saturday of my very first AC, and then I nearly died that night from like just sheer exhaustion like i can't believe i just did that what was i thinking <laughs> um that's classic <laughs> it was like yay i'm a panda what was i thinking um but um uh, yeah and then uh, and then i ended up um um actually ordering a uh, um um uh, a second suit through uh, um well i ended up getting a new set of feet done Teen suits um, uh, through Tune Suits, which was a company that unfortunately I, I believe no longer exists. It was yeah. out in British Columbia. I couldn't find any information on it. So yeah, they they had a website up back at the time, but I, I haven't been able to find them since. But uh, um, they were they had uh, mascot characters up at the time, and uh, I got my a new set of uh, feet from them because I um, um, I just I really liked their feet. I was like, I would like your ad adorable huge bare feet. Can I just order feet? And they were like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." So even though I had the the head and the hands and the and the tail uh, from Savage Turtle, I ordered uh, these big, giant, fluffy feet from them. Um, uh, I ordered a set of uh, um, black ones and a set of white ones because I knew what I was going to do eventually when I got my next suit, so that I could mix and match. Um, because I had my um, the, that one there, um, I ended up. Uh, um, using one of each and then getting that head there is from uh, uh, Scribble which it doesn't really look like a Scribble but it actually is a Scribble it was uh, I think one of the first uh, uh, bears he might have done actually uh, I could be wrong on that but uh, uh, I, I, I sent him the email on this idea and I'm like hey I want to have this idea it's a panda but it's like half regular and everything's reversed on the other side just like like there's this episode from the original series uh, of Star Trek where um, there were these characters that were black on one side and white on the other, and I came up with this idea of a panda that was like oh, I, there's a whole backstory to it which I won't get into right now unless you really want to but I won't. But uh, and I was like the idea is they went off and and these guys are uh, like an offshoot from that where regular panda markers on the one side, reverse on the other, and the scribble was like, yeah, I can make that for you. And so that's where that came about. <laughs> well, you answered my question. What's a half and half panda? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the other thing, too, is, and I'm, we're going to start asking this to all of our guests because I want to see your points of view on it. Mm -hmm. What does being a furry mean to you? Uh, for me... 
Um, well, I mean, as I said, I mean, I, I found it because I was originally into um, Star Trek and, and Doctor Who and science fiction in general. So for me, it's just an aspect really of, of, um, of cosplay. Like, like, um, like I like fursuiting because it's, it's giving me another character. But I like, I like the idea of like when I'm on Twitter, I like being, you know, panda as the you know the innuendo panda or whatever i am on there uh <laughs> um innuendo you know it's panda. just it's <laughs> well it's just it you know it gives me a little bit of a freedom to be this other character that you know maybe i'm not as free to be normally you know um but uh, um basically it's it's essentially Essentially, it's an element of cosplay, like like I would do at at Comic Con, like I've I've started to do in the last couple of years. I didn't at first; it was just mostly at at just the fur cons. But then in the last few years, I've started adding uh, props and whatnot to it, and and taking the the fur suit and you know Comic Conning it up uh, on a, a different level. Oh, cool. Um, I'm gonna skip my question, my last one for you. And go mm -hmm. straight to, uh, because I've been waiting for this since on Christmas in July. Can you tell us some stories from Comic Con? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I can. Uh, and I know. Okay, so um, there's uh, one story uh, which uh, uh, is meeting Christopher Judge, uh, who uh, um, was uh, one of the characters from Stargate. Um, now. Uh, I liked Stargate. It was a good series. It was it was uh, pretty fun, um, but uh, you know, it, I, I hadn't really thought about getting a picture done in first suit with any of the, the Stargate characters. And then I was talking with someone on Twitter, and they said, "Oh man, have you seen the video on YouTube about him finding out what furries were?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" So I went and I saw this video, and I encourage you to all you seriously have to go into YouTube and put Christopher Judge furries, and there's it's hilarious. Basically, uh, um, he one person at, at at like Dragon Con or something is talking about oh these people in animal costumes and Christopher Judge is like oh yeah this cute animal costumes what's the deal with that and the guy's like but it's they're they're in animal costumes they're they're furries and Christopher Judge is like but that they're, they're just animal costumes what's the deal with that. And everyone in the audience is just like giggling at Christopher Judge, and he's like, "What's the big deal?" Someone on the other side is like calling him over, like, "Listen to what I'm about to tell you." And then you see Christopher Judge lean over, and the other person leans over, and there's like this heated conversation, and Christopher Judge is listening intently. And all of a sudden, he leans back and goes, "What? What? People do that? <laughs> Where can I get one of these costumes?" <laughs> I was like, I need to meet Christopher Judge in fursuit. This needs to happen. So uh, I go to uh, um, Ottawa Comic Con, and he's there. And I'm dressed as Dr. Mew, my my uh, um, my Bi Cats Four Cats. Um, uh, who's in the chat? Hi, Bi Cats Four Cats. Uh, my Bi Cats Four Cats Lion. Um, I dress as Doctor Who, so I Doctor Mew. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm there in line, and uh, he, he turns and he sees me, and he beckons me over. He's got this big grin on his face. And I, he calls me over and goes, hey, how's it going? I'm pretty good. He goes, he pulls me in close, and he goes, so, before we take the picture, I got to ask, are you a mascot or are you a furry? And I go, oh, I'm a furry, Mr. Judge. And he goes, <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we we just turn and we just take the picture. But I was just in the suit like I'm like, oh god, don't double over in laughter. Just stay upright and take the pic. And then I walked away and then I just I just doubled over. Cause I'm like, seriously, I just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, See, if I were in your position, that's when I would say See, this is why I don't like to bring up furry, because you normal people are really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, if it was me, I'd be like, where's the gold symbol in your head, you know, or I don't know. I would, <laughs> I'd, I'd be in a flutter. I, I would probably be like doing something stupid. 
Oh, man. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, uh, okay, so here's another one. Um, uh, um, so I've... Um, uh, most of the most of the pictures that I do have, uh, I've, I've gone to a couple of comic cons now. Uh, mostly in uh, in Canada because I'm up in northern Ontario, so uh, I usually make it down to Toronto and Ottawa Comic Con are the two close ones for me. But there've been a lot with um, a lot of the Trek actors because uh, I'm the Trek panda, so I've gotten a lot with them. And uh, I've got a couple previously with uh, um, uh, like Love Arburton uh, and and uh, a lot of the original cast. Uh, hadn't had one yet with Will Wheaton. Um, but I, I tweeted at him once or twice on, on Twitter. Um, and then he and LeVar Burton were both at um, uh, my Ottawa Comic Con. So uh, the first time I met LeVar, uh, um, I walked up to him and he goes, Hey, a furry Trek character. That's awesome. Puts out his fist and fist bumps me. I'm like, okay, <laughs> now that's pretty cool. Now this was the next time I'm seeing him. Is the, I'm like, this is literally just the next time I'm seeing him. Um, and I, I come around the corner uh, like months later at Ottawa Comic Con, and he and Will Wheaton are doing like a, a, a double shot, and I'm there, but I don't have the head on. I, I have my feet on because I ha was just in costume, but I left my head and my hands around the corner on the table because I'm like, okay, I want a picture without the head, and then I'm going to come back around and get one in costume um, after that. So I'm there, and I'm smiling. I'm like, hey, cool picture like with them as me. And then I start to walk away, and then I get a tap on the shoulder, and I turn around, and Lavar goes, "Where's the panda head?" <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, well, it's on the table around the corner." And he must have seen like the feet or something, right? And recognized the the, the black and white feet. Oh, well, the panda head's around the table. I'm gonna go get it on right now and go get another picture with you guys in just a second. And Will Wheaton like kind of looks at me for a second, and then he snaps his fingers, looks at me, goes. <gasps> You're Lieutenant Pandas. I talked to you on Twitter. And I was like, ah, <laughs> <it's me." laughs> That's, That's so when you cool. say, shut up, Will. <laughs> shut up, Wesley. I should have. I should have. I should have shut up, Wesley. No, I just, no, I, I literally, like, I totally fanboyed. I was just like, ah! No, but um, then I came back around the corner um, uh, uh, for the second, shet, uh, second uh, uh, shot. Uh, uh, in costume, because I had to get to the back of the line again, because uh, um, you know you can't like hold up the line. Hold on, I need to put my head and hands back on. Um, <laughs> I um, got back in in the suit, and uh, um, uh, um, uh, I woke up, and and Will goes, "You look just like your Twitter icon." And then I I lowered my jaw, so I was like to get that smiling effect, and he goes, "That jaw moves!" Like he literally was freaking out about it. I'm like, "Yeah," so. Um, but uh, uh, I love the I love the I got I actually got two pictures with him. I was like, okay, I want uh, like a good picture, and I have another pose I want you to do too. And I got him to do one where we're both like just shrugging like the what, <laughs> and then when we're actually like smiling. So, um, but uh, um, yeah, that was that that was fun. Sounds like really fun stories. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be next to you when these stories happen. <laughs> so I can experience well, it, them. <laughs> you know, this is this is actually pretty hilarious. Uh, tonight, uh, I uh, I'm actually finished after this. I'm pa finishing my packing and I'm going to Montreal Comic Con this weekend. So there may be more stories and pictures. Yay! <laughs> so I have to drop you a line. There could be a follow-up podcast in a couple months. <laughs> oh God, I can't wait. That sounds exciting. So uh, so keep an eye on my FA page for further pictures coming soon. <laughs> um, all right, so these are Punya's questions. I don't know if Yay. Punya wants to ask him or if you want me to ask them. Yes, ma'am. I can, I, I can, can I answer your time. questions? Well, let's see. Um... I would like to know why you chose a panda for your fursona and why do they appeal to you? Um, you know, it was, it was, um, I was trying to think I'd actually, uh, like I said, I had kind of stumbled across the fandom randomly. So I was like, oh, I'm trying to think, what am I, what am I, what am I, you know, am I a dog, am I, you know, an elephant, am I, you know, what am I? And, um, my, my nickname with my, my old friends uh, my old friends, you know, like my, my a bunch of friends in my eighties. Um, my my nickname with my friends at the time uh, was, uh, uh, and I won't get into why, was Sanchez. And uh, one of my buddies, Eric, uh, I had been talking with him, and I was like, you know, I'm trying to figure out 
what I, you know, I was telling about the whole furry thing. Like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, my first sona, what I am, what animal I am. And, you know, I'm trying to think maybe something bearish is kind of coming to mind. But, you know, eh, black bear, white bear, I don't really know. He looks at me and he goes, dude, you're a panda. You're pandas. And I just looked at him and I went, <gasps> I am. Like, it, <laughs> like, like he named me. Like he he gave me my species and my name. Like like he he just he took panda and my old nickname Sanjay combined them and I was just like, that is brilliant and is is completely correct. Like it, I I I like black and white. I like Star Trek. I I'm very bear shaped, or at least I was at the time. You know, uh, I have the mating habits of a panda about once every 25 years. So, hey, that sounds about right. Aww. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like in awe. I'm just staring at the panda that's on the screen right now. <laughs> I just realized you stopped talking. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what's your next question? My next question is, how do you feel... Now, this is some information that I found out about you, but how do you feel about being an older generation furry? Do you feel like you're drifting from the fandom with the growing new generation? Or how do you feel Pandas is received by the fandom? Um, uh, you know, I, I don't... Uh... I don't really feel, personally I don't really feel like an older generation I I suppose I guess I kind of am I mean I'm I'm oh dear god I'm 37 <laughs> We're all gray furs here we're all I'm gray muscles I'm 37 I'm such a gray muscle <laughs> I may be black and white but I'm a gray muscle but um, um 30s the new gray muscle people <laughs> But um you know uh with as much work as I've been doing with uh um uh Indie Furcon and Motor City Furcon and and you know putting these conventions together and and you know, helping throw these cons and, and, and see people having such a good time and these, you know, talking to people at these conventions and, and interacting with them, uh, I, you know, especially at, uh, uh, you know, a lot of panels and, and, and interacting pe with people at panels like um, uh, at cons that, you know, I'm just going to attend like, uh, like uh, you know, AC or MFF, you know, if I'm just going to hang out at like uh, um, whose line is it anyway and do improv or, or something like that um, you know it just it, it feels like I'm one of the crowd I mean you know I may not be up till three in the morning you know literally shaking my tail at you know the dance but uh, you know and I might not be you know drinking a you know a 30 of you know whatever alcohol I bring you know I might over the course of the entire weekend just not in one night but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know I'm I, just because I'm not partying as hard doesn't mean I'm not enjoying myself as much as everyone else and I seem to everyone seems to be interacting with me positively or at least it, it feels that way they seem to you know enjoy tweeting with me enjoy uh, they enjoy the pictures they seem to like those on on fa the you know me with the the trek cast and the uh, uh you know the random other actors i happen to get pics with you know that uh, they seem to you know say hey oh my god that's awesome that's pretty cool so you know i just try to be a, a happy friendly guy and people seem to you know interact well with that and you know, the age doesn't really matter. I mean, whether someone's 20 years older than me or 20 years younger than me, it doesn't really seem to be a big deal. Now, that's exactly the response that I wanted to hear because I know there's, as soon as you mention gray muzzle, there's an immediate image stereotype that pops into your head. And one thing that I really like about furry is that that difference is kind of blurred when you become character. I mean, everybody's just furry. You know, <laughs> um, I don't know. That's 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 good news to me. I like like hearing that about how nobody's really kind of like falling off the edge of the fandom after they hit a certain point. I like I like furry to be for everybody. <laughs> furry forever. I oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd I'd certainly like to think so. I mean, I I don't see, you know, any particular reason why. You know, someone's too young or too old or, you know, too anything for furry. I mean, it's 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 a fandom. I mean, if you're a fan of it, there's no reason to not be a part of it and to enjoy it and to hang out with anyone else who's a part of it. I mean, there might be, you know, cl you know, cliques or groups or whatever that are going to pop up within it, but 
the general concept of it is is all encompassing i mean it doesn't matter what what religion what uh, age what um uh, gender what uh, uh, sexuality you are none of that matters we're all furs we all hang out we all have a good time and and that's what i love about this fandom that's deep that's real deep <laughs> that's right what there. she said oh, oh. oh. <laughs> i had to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. see that's what happens when space steals words right out of my mouth <laughs> oh Say it. <laughs> uh, question three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, tell us one thing you love about the fandom as is, and one thing that you would change about it for the better. Uh, one thing I love about the fandom is uh, I love the generosity of the fandom. Mm. Like, uh, like, uh, like, like I said. Uh, um, at IFC this weekend, we raised six thousand uh, dollars for our charity, which is the most uh, we've done. Like uh, um, every year, it's been a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and it's it's gotten up to to six thousand dollars in our in our fifth year, which blew my mind uh, when when they announced that at closing ceremonies. I mean, uh, I, I I would talk to um, Alkali uh, and and uh, Uncle Kage and and, and to at a couple of different conventions and, and just a lot of the other um, uh, um, staff of, of other Popcorn's cons done. like MFF and AC and just the sheer numbers that we've put up as a fandom over the last 10 years I think I think we're about to hit as a fandom 2 million if I remember correctly like we hit the one million mark already as a fandom of of charity money raised. Wow, a couple of years ago, and due to the the increased amount and the increased number of conventions over the last few years, we're about to hit that two million mark again mm. in an even shorter amount of time, and and it blows my mind the sheer generosity of that fandom, and I love that, uh, and that that's uh, like. I, <laughs> seeing the charity you know people cry when they get that check at closing ceremonies i love that but uh <laughs> um, <laughs> but um uh that's that's my my thing about the fandom that i like the most that it's not just hanging out and having a good time that that we do it for a cause as well um now as for something that i would change hmm now that is an interesting question um because hmm. immediately everybody's going what's wrong <laughs> um wow um <laughs> that's a great question i would have to um i feel like i need some dramatic music here <laughs> dun, dun, dun. um <laughs> Uh, I'm honestly, I'm trying to think of what I would, it's it's hard because if the minute you, you try and change something, it, it's, it, it's, is it, is it necessarily as all encompassing as it is? Um, um, I really don't know. Can I, can I try and ponder that in the back of my brain and maybe we'll get back to it in a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. You probably can get back okay. to it. If it, <laughs> when we get into Q and A, if it pops back into you. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to try and, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put a pin in it. We're going to stick it in the back of my brain and we'll get, we'll get to some other questions. And you then know, we'll the visual of that does not seem pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> You pinhead. <laughs> no, I did not like that movie as a child, so let's not get that reference now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, how about this then? Um, Pandas has gone through a couple of changes over the years. Will another change be eminent in the future, or do you think you have a pretty solid image that you'd like to stick to? And if you did ever want to change Pandas's look, or even species, what do you think you would change? Well, um... Um, that's an interesting question because uh, um, I mean when I first started um, uh, back at uh, <laughs> you get you with a hard question here <laughs> back at MFF 2011 I was at my um, 
my peak weight of uh, about 425 pounds. So I was very bear shaped. Uh, so saying I was you know, very panda shaped. Um, I've uh, since then dropped uh, to, as of this morning at the gym, 303. Congratulations. So, oh my gosh, uh, they're like the same weight. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm that close to the elusive, you know, hitting the twos. So as I'm getting fitter and fitter and fitter, um, you know, it, it, it's that question in my mind, am I really, you know, is that panda, you know, that's where I started and he'll always be in my heart, but am I always going to be a panda if I start getting thinner and thinner and thinner? Because, you know, everyone's all like, oh, you're a skinny panda, you know, that's, skinny pandas aren't as fun. And I'm like, well. Padding. The, yeah. So, <laughs> it, it could it be that he could undergo some changes? Quite possibly. Um, Just say pandas went to Hollywood and got some uh, plastic surgery. You know, it could, could be, could be. I mean, you, you know, I do. I did love. There was a commercial about a year ago that uh, for the. Uh, um, uh, oh, I forget what vehicle it was, but it, it had those hamsters. And then they worked out. They got super, super thin. Yeah. And they got like super, super thin. And I was like, oh, my God, that's adorable. And I'm like, man, that's going to be me. So, <laughs> you know, am I going to be like a skinny hamster? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. So um, could I end up evolving into something else? I mean, I have adopted the, the, the lion fursona um, as well from, uh, from By Cats for Cats. You guys are adorable, by the way. Thank you again for that suit. That is amazing. Um, <laughs> They're so, in chat right now. I know that's why I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it, it's it's one of those things that um, you know. Could he continue to change? Quite possibly, um, but realistically, uh, he seems like part of me. He seems like something that's not really going to go away. You know, maybe maybe he gets a little more muscly maybe he'll be more of a you know commander Riker muscle shirt kind of a guy maybe I'll wear that at the uh, the uh, uh, Midwest Fur Fest uh, you know anyway uh, <laughs> anyways <laughs> moving on um <laughs> Um, realistically, I don't see him changing too much, but um, that, you know, like he's happy and he's fun there, but his look's definitely going to change a little bit. Um, and I do actually have, ironically, uh, and I'm forgetting, I do actually have a BNC version of that same suit. I, I, uh, I, I, I he's a little uh, tunier version of that. Because um, uh, I did like the. Uh, um, um, the scribble version, but I, I decided to get a, a, a BNC partial as well um, of the same character because uh, um, uh, the scribble one seemed at the right angle, like there, it looks great, but at the wrong angle, the eyes on the um, scribble suits have, I'm going to call it the, I'm going to mess you up. Look, um, I've had other, other, <laughs> I won't say the other phrase people have used with it, um, uh, but uh, they have like scribble suits. They have that look, that penetrating gaze. If you have the right angle on them, um, and uh, I wanted something that always had a toony look to it. So um, I contacted BNC, and I actually do have a version of that same character from BNC that looks a little toonier. Um, uh, but um, you know, and I love them both. But in terms of any other like general changes to the character, or could I change to something else completely? Don't know. Like it's one of those things that, as I change physically, as you know, life moves on, as I get older, things could change. Things could become different. But in my soul, Pandes is a part of me. You know, that's who I've been since. I found the fandom. I don't see him really changing. Sorry, very long answer to that question. No, no, that's fine. I mean, personas are personal. <laughs> it's expected. They are. It's not like just, all right, you get a persona. Here it is. There you go. Go run along. You know, no, it's very, it's very much, you know, you, you adopt a persona and it's, it's, it, you take it on and it's, it's yours and you tweak it and, you know, 
your personality. It, it's, it is it's, literally your personality, but in a different form. It <laughs> is. It is. I mean, I mean, that's. <laughs> it is. I have to ask, what are you making in the background? <laughs> is it? Is it? Who's who's got the microwave in the background? Oh, it's my my roommates are getting ready for work. Oh, okay. Were... <laughs> okay. All of a sudden, you just hear this like in the chat microwave beep. <laughs> They, they hear it every time, and as soon as they hear it, they say microwave. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, that's why, I like, in the middle of, like, one of your stories, I'm like, hmm, popcorn's done. <laughs> no, no, no. I made sure to have my dinner. Uh, I, I literally I got off work, had my dinner, and, and barely got my computer up and running in time for uh, uh, for 10 o'clock. So, I haven't had dinner uh, yet. 10 o'clock <laughs> Eastern time. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I know my uh, my roommates are up and getting ready because they uh, uh, they work the night shift, so uh, mm -hmm. um, that's what they're up and doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one more question for you, dear. Oh, not a problem. If there's one thing that you could leave with the furry fandom to leave your mark, what would you like it to be? Oh, just. Um just to have positively interacted with as many people as possible you know like if uh even if they don't remember it just that somehow in some way i positively influence people even if even if i don't remember it even if they don't remember it just that every interaction that i could have interaction that you know i, I don't want to leave a negative trail behind me. I want there to be, you know, uh, uh, a river of positivity flowing <laughs> and harmony. Uh, from me. You know, you know, wonder, peace and harmony flowing from Pandez. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just think, not, just not pieces of Pandez. Pe no, they make. <laughs> hopefully, they make prescriptions for that. No, um, <laughs> that would be leprosy, dear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need reverse. <laughs> Re reverse leprosy for you. You can all come together. <laughs> God. But um, no, just um, just that. Hopefully, um, in some way, shape, or form, whether it's through, you know, my random tweeting, whether it's through my pictures, whether it's through my interactions with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, whether it's uh, through this podcast right here. If I have positive interactions with people in some way, shape, or form as long as I can continue doing that as long as I can um, that's that's the mark I want to leave on this fandom beautiful awesome well that we're gonna go ahead and segue into Q&A now and uh, folks how Q&A works is all questions are put in bold and all regular chatter is in regular font and I'll go ahead and change our font to uh, regular as well um, and while we let them kind of come up with their questions here, we have two questions so far. And you guys can ask questions for pandas. You can ask questions to us or anything in that matter. You can ask us. Don't ask us stupid questions like what our favorite color is or what. How many pancakes can we eat on the moon? Yeah. I mean, that's just <laughs> 500. Um, what is your name? <laughs> what is your favorite color? What is the air speed of? Ah! <laughs> Um, so the first question comes from, I want to say low ripe <laughs> but, or low riape. Um, I don't know how to say your name. I'm really sorry. Uh, space, how long you've been in the fandom? And I was thinking over this as Pandas was talking and I believe it's, it'll be three years this October that I've been in the fandom. Very young, but I'm, I suck in a lot of information. So I know a lot about furries. I knew a lot about furries and I should have in like my first like couple months <laughs> so um shall asks this for everyone what i have a question for pandas as well but okay go ahead <laughs> okay well this one came next and then we'll go for pandas i'm just going okay. in order I'm that's sorry. fine <laughs> um what fur cons are we all attending this year like from here on out would you like to go first pandas um in terms of FurCon, the only one less left for the re uh, if you're talking the rest of the year, yeah. uh, literally now that it's you know September, um, um, the only one planned as of right now is Midwest Fur Fest um, in December. Now uh, there's a chance I 
might make it to for reality in I think it's October. I'm I'm thinking I might be able to, but it's sort of up in the air, and it depends on some uh, uh, moving situation uh, that uh, I'm I'm working on at the moment uh, with work and whatnot. Um, and then of course Montreal Comic Con. If anyone uh, here is in from Montreal, hey, come on by, say hi if you're there. Uh, but um, um, uh, that's pretty much it for the rest of the the calendar year because we're so close to 2015 already oh my goodness oh it's just flying by um i think punya and i only have one con coming up right mm-hmm. punya and i are also going to mff midwest fur fest so we'll be there i get to meet all the fun people that i like had on the shows in the past few years and i'm super jazzed to meet all these people but at the same time I will have no idea what's going on because it'll be my first big con. So I'm a little nervous because I don't really like big crowds, but at the same time, I like just throwing myself into a big crowd and hoping something happens. So <laughs> You come hang out with me. I'll show you my hood. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, if, you're, if you see a space bear kind of randomly walking around taking pictures of like, why the heck is he taking a picture of the wall? That's probably me. I, I like taking pictures of just random things. So it's if you more, see it's, a rolling glitter ball, it's probably me and space. <laughs> <laughs> if you see a person just split their legs open and then cr uh, glitter props out, it's probably me. Cause it's I wanna... probably Martha Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, Draco2009 or Drago or Drago. One of those. Uh, pandas, what inspired you to become a panda? Oh, we already answered this, didn't we? Yes, we did cover that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> move on to the next one then. Um, Punya, how did you get in the fandom? Um, I knew about furry, but I had no idea that there was a huge fandom associated with it. And before furry, I just knew them as anthros. Um, and then I went to college and found out that a friend of mine who I went to high school with ran a furry club <laughs> um, at the same college that we were both attending. Um, so that's how I started to, to get into it and learned more about the fandom itself. Um, but I have been actively involved in the fandom for eight years. That's awesome. Um, Tavi Monk asks, I'm assuming this is to you, Pandas, um, he says, my big thing with Star Trek are the ships. Do you have a favorite? If so, which one? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I guess, personally, I'd have to go with um, uh, the Enterprise D. Um, I don't know why. I just I grew up on Next Gen. That was my yeah. series growing yeah. up. I mean, I like I like I liked the Defiant from DS9. I liked Voyager. Those were good ships too. But um, the Enterprise E from the movies was cool too. But D that was my ship growing up. I mean, that was that was the one. You know, uh, you know, uh, prepare to separate the saucer section. You know, like that was that was my ship. You know, watching that growing up. I mean, if I, if I had to pick one, it's 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 got to be that one. What about you, Punya? We're just gonna. Oh, I am the same way, but I also have a soft spot for Voyager. Okay, I have one, but I have to look <laughs> it up real quick because I can't remember what the name of it's called. Um, let's see if I can get this name on here. Let's see if anyone understands what this is. The. <laughs> The NSEA protector. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Wait, was that the one? <laughs> that wasn't the one that split into like four ships or something, was it? No, it's from Galaxy Quest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm assuming this is all. Uh, who is your doctor, classic or current? Yes, that's my question. Oh, okay. Who is your favorite doctor, both classic and current? Ooh, uh, mm. Mm. <laughs> classic, classic has to be a tie between 
uh, Peter Davison and Tom Baker. Um, those were my two growing up. Uh, the the Please fourth share. and the fifth. For those who, yeah, I was gonna say for those who don't know, go ahead and drop the number. <laughs> uh, fourth and fifth. Um, uh, mostly the fourth. Um, you know, Sonic Screwdriver, Canine Robot Dog. You know, mm-hmm. Master. You know, uh, uh, you know that was. You know, but fourth and fifth uh, were my my main two growing up. So classic those two. Current. Ooh, you're gonna make me choose. I know. I feel Smith. the same way. <laughs> You know, I I, I I I liked I liked Matt Smith. I really, really, really liked Matt Smith. But for me, I have to go tenant. I have to go tenant. Tenant's kind of hot. You remember what I called him in the last one, right? What did you call him in the last one? I don't David know. Tennant. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 seriously yeah. though, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, um, um, Eccleston, Eccleston was fantastic, and he needed at least one more season, and I yeah. am mad that he only had one. It was a but, little short. But Tennant, uh, for me, um, uh, I was very, very sad to see him go. And uh, I loved Matt. I, Matt was fantastic. And oh my God, the 50th anniversary episode with with Matt and and Smith and 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 the the War Doctor all together John was John Hurt. Oh, that that episode blew my mind. And if they could have worked Eccleston in there too somehow, that would have been great. But you know they couldn't. But um, Tenant, Tenant, Tenant. For, for current and and uh, and that guy right there Baker for uh, classic and and, and uh, fourth and fifth for classic but a lot of the fourth for classic but uh, tenant for current. For me, just real quick, um, I haven't watched a lot of the classic, but I have to say the second Doctor, um, Patrick Troughton, is probably my favorite. And out of the current. I am also a Tenet fan, but I am really warming up to Capaldi. I do like Capaldi. Oh, I'm is looking he the forward old to one? this season. Mm-hmm. He's the new one. He is grumpy and sassy, and it's not going to take your bullshit. I love oh. sassy. I'm sorry. I swore. I got two into the... Beep. There's the... There's that a, was my there's, one. There's a sensor. Yeah, we all get one. <laughs> oh, hey, my Des, God. where was your microwave then? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Though I, I I I'm I'm liking him so much. You know, don't look in that very mirror, and that's very angry. And you know, it's like oh, I just I was just dying. Like I, I'm I'm really liking uh, this uh, this Capaldi. Um, I I I really, you know, uh, when when they they announced him and they started showing like clips from his previous show where like every second word is dropping like you know words we can't say in this podcast. Um, um, because you know his last show was very, very you know R-rated. Uh, I was just like, wow, uh, this is gonna be an interesting show. But um, uh, yeah, Capaldi's really, you know, you know. Like, oh, good, I'm Scottish. I can complain now. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think I'm a hugger. <laughs> oh man, but uh, no, I'm I'm liking Capaldi. I'm really liking him. Well, I haven't watched any of the new ones, so don't ruin it for me. Oh, we won't. <laughs> and I, I already know that I can't beat the epicness of eating a Doctor Who cookie while watching Doctor Who. So I'll I know. To... Sorry, that that glory goes to me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, a question from Drago. I don't know how to say that name. We'll say. I say Drago. Drago. Um, this is for all. You might have already answered this question, um, but what made you discover the fandom? I think we did. Oh, me? Yeah. Well, I think this is, this is for all. So, oh, for all. Yeah. Well, we... Panda has told us in the interview, and I briefly shared, I think you're the only one. <laughs> Mine is R-rated. However, <laughs> I will say that a nice video from MFF got me into the fandom. We'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't a dance video... 
No, 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 no. Okay. No. Space, you're like the one out of three in this situation. <laughs> in, in my in my case, it was it was a couple. Of, it, it was more than just like. We'll tell the... you this story in detail on For Media After Dark coming yeah. up next. <laughs> that is channel. Which um, is something that we've contemplated. Yeah, that is because there is some deep dark stuff that we can't really talk about on this particular show, but I'm sure we could talk about it on a After Dark show. Um, ow. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> by Cat's forecast, uh, asks Pandas, um, your stand-up comedy rocks. When and where was your first time standing up in front of people to deliver, and how were your nerves? Um, the very first time I actually, um, okay. Technically, I was at an open mic at Anthrocon, and um, Alkali, who, if you've ever been to any con, if you see a six-foot tall guy wearing a top hat, he's seven foot with a top hat, um, uh, walking he's around. He's everywhere. He's, he's everywhere. Uh, he was one of the people very involved with Whose Line Is It Anyway, and it does, runs it at a lot of cons. Um, um, basically, it was like, Pendez, get up and say... A funny story or something. You know, get up and do open mic. I'm like, I don't have anything prepared. So technically, that was my first time getting up and doing an open mic. But I wasn't prepared. I just got up and told a funny story from work, and I, I was completely unprepared. So I had no nerves because I had nothing to do. Um, and people got a laugh. It was an amusing story that I was like, okay, that was funny. But the first time that I actually prepared a bit was actually. FCN 2013, the last FCN, I did a uh, my Wreck It Ralph routine, <laughs> um, which is on my YouTube channel, <laughs> um, um, and uh, I actually per uh, I did that um, for the um, the open mic, and they asked me to come back and do it for the variety show on on Sunday as well, um, and it was funny because not only did I I do the the stand up bit but i actually something happened on the saturday night that caused me to add an addendum <laughs> to the bit on sunday so it was like oh well this is kind of awesome <laughs> so um as for nerves um they were uh, the very first time that i got up and, and did my prepared stand up bit a uh, little bit a little bit shaky i was uh, um you can't, you can't really tell in the video but uh i was uh not not like like i was like s scared as heck i was like oh my god everyone's gonna hate me they're gonna hate this story they're not gonna think it's funny at all but um <laughs> you know i had just i had rehearsed it a lot and like i had the lines down and and i got up there and i told it and it flowed and and you know the jokes went well and people laughed and you can hear it you know really well in the video and and it I mean, went really well and, and then that was the, the FC in 2013 was the first time I had done stand up and since then uh, thanks to you know a couple of close friends and uh, 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 I've uh, been encouraged to keep doing it repeatedly for some bizarre reason people think I'm actually amusing I don't know why <laughs> um, so I, I've been doing uh, little stand up bits at, at open mic and, and IFC and what not uh, um, here and there and We'll we'll see what happens. All right, um, Punya, how long have you been in the fandom? Eight years. That's a long time. You're mm -hmm. old. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baxton, if you're buying a fursuit, would it be better to send measurements and like photos of yourself, or how would you go about that? Um. Uh, duct tape dummy. I've, yes, duct tape dummy is very very good. Um, um, I've I've done a couple ones where I've uh, not only um, I I haven't had to send a duct tape dummy in for mine because I haven't had a full suit done. I've just had partials, so really I've only had to have um, measurements of my my head and and ankles and wrists and stuff. So, um, but um, uh, I recommend. Number one, don't try and do it yourself. 
<laughs> it's very, very awkward. Have someone assist you. Um, you're going to get more accurate measurements that way. Um, and then ask them if they have like a schematic or a set of drawings because they'll usually say, um, follow this schematic, follow this set of drawings, measure from here to here, measure from here to here. Um, and try to follow that as best you can or have your friend follow that as best you can. Um, you know, uh, if you can, you know, go into like a, um, a, um, like a tailoring place and say, Hey, is there, I'm thinking about getting measured for a suit. You know, can I get my measurement done? You don't have to tell them that it's not a business suit. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll help you and take the measurements for you. So, um, but uh, um, usually the maker will provide you with all the information that you need to give them if they're in any way a good maker. Like if, if they're just like, yeah, send me your, your measurements, then eh, you may want to double check on that. But if it's a reputable maker, um, they'll, they'll say, here is the list of measurements I need from you. Your, you know, your your forehead at approximately this, you know, thing. Your neck at this level. Your shoulder from here to here. Your, you know, all these measurements. So, um, that's your. Uh, that's what I would definitely uh, um, do with the, from from my uh, experience there. Um, we're going to go with two more questions because we're going to go to the 15 mark if we can with these last two questions. Um, I mean, there is some more questions here in chat. We just kind of copied and pasted them into a spreadsheet. So we're working on them as much as we can, but we won't get to all of them tonight. And we're sorry about that. Um, so ice TYP wolf, ice tip wolf. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What was IFC 2004 <laughs> dance competition like since it was their first one? Um, it went fantastic. Uh, if you um, uh, go to um, uh, youtube.com slash user slash uh, the Indie Furcom, T H E Indie Furcom, uh, all of the um, videos are up on there. Um, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. Thank you to all of the amazing, wonderful dancers who came out and performed. Um, it, it, I was deathly afraid we were hardly going to get anyone. And we had a packed room. We had um, a good, solid set of dancers who did really well. Uh, some people that blew that m my mind. Um, you know, people seem to enjoy me being MC for some wonderful reason. Um, um, Ronnie, who came and helped judge, uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, um, uh, 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 Shy Bunny, who could not make it to the con, but inspired me to actually put on the dance contest by tweeting me for an entire year last year. IFC should have a dance comp. IFC should have a dance comp. When's IFC going to have a dance comp? Okay, we've got a dance comp. Now you better come next year and dance in it. So <laughs> uh, I give everyone a pass on not being able to make it this year because we were on uh, um, Labor Day weekend. But next year we're back on the right weekend. So hopefully we'll get like, instead of 10, like, boom, like 20. So we'll see. Um. Hmm. Do you have time for one more question, Poon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can linger for another question. Okay. Uh, we'll make this a last question. This is from <coughs> Jonathan Maurice or Marias or Marias. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Marias Carey. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is for all. So all of us need to answer this one. How do you feel about, as some people do, firmly separating fursona and fursuiting character? Um, I can definitely understand that. Um, you know, uh, for me personally, uh, um, it's kind of the same. Like I have, um, you know, my my. Uh, my Sona and my suit are, they're both kind of me, but I definitely understand the separation in that a lot of people don't have a suit. So, you know, uh, um, the idea of uh, um, everyone has a Sona, but not everyone has a suit. So obviously having, you know, 
the separation is is definitely understandable um uh um I don't think I would want to separate the song but from yeah I mean because that's part of the character if I was in fursuit I would be the exact same person as I am at work for instance when I run to, I, I would do this in suit too when I run down the stairs I hold my boobs because they bounce up and down like crazy and everyone <laughs> makes fun of me for it I would do the same thing in fursuit I would hold myself like my breasts up and I would run down the stairs and people are like what are you doing I'm like I'm just being me that's my character I'm just quirky spacey whatever I mean I don't know why I would separate that there's no point <laughs> <laughs> I I do separate between the two um, but it's because I have characters that are molded after certain aspects of my personality but not a character that I would want to portray at a convention like Punya is the only character that I will ever first suit as she is a, 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 the closest representation of myself that I would want to share with people. Everybody else, um, say like Mavi or I have a, a Raichu character named Pancake, they're fun and they would make fun suits, but I just don't identify as closely with them as I do with Punya. Right true, on. true. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, my computer just did something really weird, like my monitor just shut off, and I don't know why. So I could literally crash at any second. So the government just is to let you know that. You. <laughs> I know. Um, I think you said that you can stay in chat and answer questions after we go off live. Is that true? I'm, or? I'm going to reboot my computer, so I will come back in less than five minutes to do that because, um, like I said, um, I literally may I can't even see anything on my screen right now. Okay. So once we sign off, I will turn everything off and turn it back on so that everything is working properly. But I will come back, and anyone who wants to keep uh, asking questions, um, I'll stick around and uh, and answer them in in type form. Well, if you want to, you can say good good night now, and then we'll just kind of end our show, and then I'll st I'll go offline like as our show, but I'll stay in chat chat with them until you come back on. Oh, that'd be perfect. Okay, well then, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Punya and Space, for having me on. Thank you, everyone, yep. uh, listening to the show on uh, Fermedia. Uh, uh, you've been listening to Fermedia Podcast. Um, <laughs> Just real quick before we go, I want we want to do a little shout out to uh, Ivy Earth, whose birthday is coming up on the fifth. Pandas, you're good to go. Nineteenth, I think. So happy birthday, my dear. I hope it's a good one. Is he, did he pop out? I think so. Okay. Um, well, he beamed off the bridge. <laughs> it's funny. Um, everyone stick around. Don't go anywhere. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll save this, and then I'll go back and go live again, and Pandas will call in, and we'll just answer additional uh, messages. That way, Poonia, you can go. So everyone stay here. But just so that you guys all know, uh, next week, we don't really have anything planned. We might do a straight from the muzzle show where we kind of just BS whatever we want to for like a full hour. Um, and then the week after that is artist critique. Stay tuned into the FA. Um, that's where we're going to post our journal. And we're looking for artists who want their artwork critiqued. Things that maybe they can improve on or whatnots. And we'll have mixed disaster as our guest artist on and she'll she, Poonia, and I will all go and talk about different artwork and stuff and kind of critique it as we go. So um, look to look forward to that post. I'll post it probably tonight or tomorrow, and then I'll post instructions on it. But that's it. That's all we got tonight. Woo! woo -na 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 miracle. <laughs> I know that was woo-hoo. Um, <laughs> we had a miracle. <laughs> oh, we had a miracle. All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching. Um, if you guys want to stick around, you're more than welcome to. I'll be going offline, saving this, and then coming back online again. I'll have pandas, and then we'll answer additional questions that you guys may have. Um, so by all means, stick around if you want to. If you don't, that's totally cool. Um, thanks for playing, and have a good night. Good night. <laughs>